Kitco News special coverage of the PDAC convention is brought to you by Gold Mining and Uranium Energy Corp. We're back now with Brent Cook at the PDAC, and he is the founder of Exploration Insights alongside Joe Mazumdar, whom we've had on the show regularly. Brent, welcome back to the show. Thanks, good to be be here in Toronto seeing you. Good to see you in, uh, in person, Brent. It's been a while since we did this in person. Now, let's just, what do you like right now in terms of the metals? Nothing's been doing well. Nickel's down. I'm looking at the charts. Copper's down. Uh, platinum's down year to date. This is all year to date. Uh, silver is down year to date, like I think 7% was the latest number I saw. Gold is up slightly by about 1%, but you know, functionally flat. None of these metals are good. We're doing better than Tesla. <laughs> But no, you're, you're right. Uh, None of these metals have been doing well, is what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we're, it's scary out there. We're looking at, I, I suspect, a major collapse in the major markets. And when that happens, it takes everybody down, including us. Um, I'd like to say it's right now is a buying opportunity, but I suspect we'll see a better one in terms of the metals uh, and the companies that mine or look for them. The buying the dip mentality for stocks just haven't, it hasn't worked out well this year. So far. No, we're we're I think we're heading into the recapitulation stage, okay. um, and once that happens, that's the time to start. I mean, we're not going to know exactly when, but certainly looking forward, uh, I'm very certain that the copper price and commodity is going to do well. Its demand is way going to exceed supply. Uh, nickel's the same. Gold looks good. I think with what we're seeing happening with the uh, Central Bank and the U.S. Uh, confiscating reserves. Wait, what, uh, US they're dollar what? They're confiscating reserves? Yeah, when, when Russia invaded Ukraine, yeah. the U.S. pulled their, uh, their reserves, you know, kind of confiscated their U.S. dollar reserves. Right. And that was, that's like bingo. The rest of the world saw that. And I think what we're going to see is more uh, non-Western countries start putting gold in their reserves as opposed to U.S. dollar. And that's going to happen over this year. So I think that's a positive for gold as well. All right. So which of these metals that I mentioned, gold, silver, nickel, copper, platinum, platinum's down year to date as well, do you think has the most investment potential for, well, I don't want to say just the remainder of the year because we're already in June, but you know, for the next year and a half? I would say copper, nickel, and gold, okay. probably in that order. Those copper and nickel have nothing to do with gold. I'm wondering why you put those two well, those because, three together. Because the whole in electrification um, relies on those two metals, plus lithium. Okay. And as I said, we don't have enough copper uh, supply to meet what the coming demand. Right. Uh, and then we're seeing issues in Peru, Chile, uh, even the U.S. in terms of permitting or, you know, social issues are slowing down mine development or stopping them completely. Um, and to find a new tier one copper deposit and put it in production is a minimum 10 year uh, horizon, a minimum 10 year horizon. So the price has got to go up. People talk about the electrification story and how that impacts nickel, cobalt, lithium, uh, battery metals that we know, but I wonder if it has any direct impact on gold. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Gold is a separate, a concept, I guess, and I think the you know, the uh, popularity of gold has is going to have to do with it's going to hold its value as so many things go down. Okay. What about silver? Is silver related Same. to the electrification story? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it solar is. Panels, to a degree. Solar batteries. panels, batteries, such. Yeah, I mean, I, Joe and I, we're not really gold bugs or silver bugs. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't go with silver's going to hundred bucks or anything, but we do know that there's a, a, a dearth of new high margin deposits being found and put into production. So if you just focus on those deposits that offer high margin, okay. you know, the best of the best, if you will, right. they're going to do well and they will be taken over by larger companies. So that's, you know, in terms of our investment philosophy, that's where we're going. So you said copper, nickel, gold, these are the commodities that you're looking at for investment potential. Is it because of the supply and demand fundamentals you're talking about? Will these metals be in uh, extraordinary demand over the next few uh, quarters to years and uh, supply wouldn't be able to keep up? 
Yes, in, 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 a, in a word, yes. I think we're looking at the next decade, we're going to see those commodities uh, rise in price. And in, in terms of keeping up, there will be more supply coming in as you get copper to five, six dollars, but it can't come in that fast because okay. it takes so much time to to build. Why, why and, can't it come in that fast? Is it a regulatory well, issue or is it? Uh... Well, yeah, it takes you know the regulatory, and most of these companies, uh, the larger mining companies, are not going to use four or five dollar copper for their base case in terms of de development. They're, they've been burned too many times before. They're much more conservative now. So they're going to go with three, three fifty copper, you know, fifteen hundred gold, as their that's their price deck they use in their um, development scenarios and their you know, feasibilities. But we're at eight point six percent CPI uh, in the U.S. Uh, this is the highest it's been in forty years. All the sustaining costs of uh, the producers have been going up as a result of input costs going up, all the way from oil to to labor. Now these costs are not, uh, they're pretty sticky. They're not going away anytime soon. How are miners fighting, uh, fighting margin decreases as a result of costs going up? And I'm looking at, just look, just look at the gold mining sector, okay? The, the gold price has been flat year to date, like I said. So we've got rising costs and a flat output price. What are miners doing? Not a lot they can do. I mean, you know, the co cost of fuel is the cost of fuel. The cost of labor is what it is. Um, you can probably try and lock in lock in prices, but uh, you know, are you going to lock in a hundred something dollar oil right now? I don't think so. I think we are going to see margins decrease in all ac across the board in every industry, not just mining, but in virtually every industry. Margins are going to decrease, and if they can't increase their uh, selling price, or the selling price of the commodity doesn't increase, they're going to not make less money. Well, so margins are going to continue to decrease. So would you say to investors now is a good time to buy in or would you wait for margins to, I guess, start improving? If I knew exactly when the bottom was, <laughs> but... Um, that was one way I was going to ask you the question, but... <laughs> I think, um, I, again, what, what we do at Exploration Insights is it's, it's more about the fundamentals. What, what is the, the margin on this thing now? Is it a high, high margin deposit? It'll last through this period. Their margin may decrease some, but looking forward, the metal prices, the commodity prices are going to go up. So we're looking at something like this, if you yeah. will. Okay. I was talking to some people in the um, industry about uh, financing in the mining sector, especially for the juniors. Sentiment's just really bad is the consensus I've been getting. Not a lot of activity in M&A, not a lot of activity on the... Um, on any sort of financing. And um, is, that, is that mainly due to rising interest rates or is that because the markets have just been beaten down? I'm just curious because two years ago, the sentiment was very much different. Everyone was trying to get into the space. The Oren Inc. investment index that Kai Hoffman puts out was at record highs. It hasn't been that long. It's only been two years. What happened? Well. A lot. <laughs> In case you know, no one's been looking. Um, you know, we've had Ukraine, we've had COVID, we got rid of Trump. Um, it, it's it's been a wild couple of years, and I think it's, there's a fear factor. Um, but I'll tell you where I am seeing money coming in. The floor funds coming into our sector are in the green metals. Uh, I've I've spoken with a number of large funds and uh, private equity groups that are looking to invest in the sector, but it has to have a green component to it, you know, and, you know, add a little sex ESG to it as well. That's where the money's starting to flow into. So certainly nickel, copper, cobalt, um, that's, that's, where, that's where there's money coming in and available for, you know, exploring and building. Right, you don't see ESG requirements from either the regulators or lobbyists weigh down on valuations. Wouldn't they bring up costs, operating costs? Wouldn't they put pressures on miners into where they can operate, low-cost environments, they can't go there anymore? It's, it's an ad additional friction, for sure. Um, but like I said, the, the, the money that's coming into this sector is looking at ESG as an important component of why they're going to invest. So, yes, it's friction, and a lot of it is just foolishness, but that's, that's the way it is. And, yeah, it does add time and costs especially management time. You know, management time 
is going more and more towards having to deal with that sort of thing. So you mentioned that uh, battery metals are one sector that could see a rebound and capital is flowing into that sector. So give us some stock picks then that you like currently. Okay. Uh, and these are, you know, these are stuff that I own personally and Joe owns in the letter. Um, something I've picked up recently is Arizona Sonora Copper. It's a project in Arizona on private land. They've got the permitting well, well finished. They've got water, which is key. Anywhere you're going to build a mine, you better make sure you got water. Yeah. And this thing is up dip from what uh, Friedland is going to be floating here over the next uh, month or so. Ivanhoe uh, Electric, which has the down plunge of this deposit. And they're putting a valuation of it, I understand, of around a billion dollars and raising a couple hundred, no, I'm sorry, yeah, a billion, and raising a couple hundred million for this thing. And Arizona Sonora has the up dip portion of it, and Rio Tinto just put 25 million bucks into them. So that, that's one I like a lot. All right, fantastic. Brent, I appreciate your thoughts. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Great to see you at PDAC. Thank you. All right, and thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lynn. Kitco News special coverage of the PDAC convention is brought to you by Gold Mining and Uranium Energy Corp.